Morning, folks. Early start today. A little bit of a longer drive, and where I'm fishing is, uh, is at a. We're going to utilize a creative access point, and we are going to go over uh, the, the right approach for a throw and go rig. Something that you're going to you're going to access the water quickly. The reason why it's important to to park your vehicle, get in and go, uh, I, this is not trespassing. I will tell you that I've researched it on Onyx and I know that I'm legal <laughs> by a narrow margin. So there's a private property next to it that's fairly active. Um, it's someone's hunt camp in just general recreation area. Um, you know, this is Saturday. There's always someone there. And I'm going early to get in before they wake up because I don't necessarily need to hide because I'm not doing anything wrong. I am legal, but the access is not formal. And I just don't want to give them the time to come flying over in their side-by-side -side or four-wheeler and start asking questions, especially with out-of-state tags. Um, I'll park legal, I'll access the water legal. I just don't want to hang out long enough to be subjected to the questions of a not in my backyard, you know, adjoining landowner. Don't want to do it. So before we get there, we will go over um, how exactly you're going to travel that light, especially with a very steep incline that I'm. I'm bringing the, the kayak down. Uh, it, it'll be a little bit after daylight that I arrive, but I'm going to stop somewhere else before, before I get there and uh, kind of prep some things. I'll show you what that looks like. All right, we are close. Time to do some prep work. Uh, one of the best things that you can do is get a bag like this. This one's just a mesh NRS bag and it um, it's basically how you're going to get all of your loose items, your food, your beverage, loose bags of soft plastic, uh, whatever it is, loose items, and uh, put it all in one bag and I'll be slinging that over my shoulder. Uh, because the kayak's going to go down at a pretty steep angle, things will slide out of it. Uh, we're also going to take rod holders off. Anything that we think can catch on vines and branches on the way down, we're going to put that in here as well. Now, these are nice because I've condensed all the tackle into some soft plastics and I'll flip around this, this track pack and show you. I got everything else in there. Some jerk baits, some jigs, some scent, a little crank bait or two. It's really all I need. So I've, I've done, you know, done myself the favor of keeping something fairly lightweight, not carrying a big heavy, uh, you know, not carrying this. This is a lot of weight. So got a couple other little random things. For sure my net. The net I may strap into the uh, into the kayak here, into the rear well. Camera mount. And uh, last minute I'll throw when I'm done filming. I get that camera bag. This is a smaller one that I usually carry. I want to keep it lightweight. Got two batteries, this camera and I don't know. Oh, I do have the dome in there. So this part's pretty critical. I have the I'll just show you. I have the strap ready. Uh, quick, easy deployment. Um, the Rogue Fishing Company 
adjustable drag strap. Lots of length. I'm going to need this coming down a very steep bank here in, in uh, a couple minutes. So it's good to have this ready to go. And uh, I just used this little Velcro part so I can just pull that, get it down to the ground, pull that up, and just just go. Fishing rods and paddles is another unique consideration. Uh, the goal is to do this in as few trips as possible. If you can do it in one, that's awesome. One way that you can do it in one, if you have a hatch inside like you do on the light tackle too, uh, you might be able to fit things in. I haven't actually tried this yet, so I'm going to give it a shot. If I can, about the rods. I'm going to try it here in a second, but if you if you can't get it in there, uh, you want to have them totally inside. If you, if you lay them on the kayak, get some straps, make sure those tips don't stick out, because you don't want to do this and, and find out as soon as you get there that, hey, you've broken your rods, dragging it through the brush on the way in. So, internal is the best. Uh, Strapping it in to make sure that the tips are on the inside is one step, you know, not as great. And then the other is just you take a separate trip with paddles, rods, and and sling the, uh, you know, that one mesh bag over your shoulder. Take two trips. That may be what I do just to keep this as light as possible. All right, looks like I was able to fit them in there which is great because that lets me do this whole thing in one shot I'll put the uh, put the mesh bag over my shoulder get this drag strap going and get down there and uh, not have to come back to the vehicle so one last step is to I'm not gonna tell you to take your straps off but like if, if you got a lot of wraps on them when you're real close, you want to decrease the amount of time that it takes to get these off. So if you can see here, you know, I got a lot of wraps on them. I'm just going to tuck this, this loose end in the, uh, the Velcro up there. Just double that over. Uh, it's not what I like to do for long hauls, but for the short distance we're going, from here to the launch, that's fine. I got one thing to undo and I go. I may actually do the rear one when I'm just down the street from it uh, and just have it on with this one so I'm super fast.
look at what I got here. I will note that <clears throat> I did it very quickly in one trip, but I did go back up for a second. And the reason for that, I went up, grabbed a contractor strength heavy mill bag and picked it up, picked up as much trash as I could. So you don't always want to be seen when you're bringing your boat in. Again, not that it's illegal. I was legal on this, but it's the not in my backyard thing. The best way to combat the not in my backyard thing is to pick up trash. There's going to be trash. <clears throat> if you're seen where you parked your truck and you are picking up trash, no local will ever screw with your vehicle. They won't call the authorities. They won't, they might come over and say, hey, it, why don't you park in my driveway over there? Or, hey, my uncle actually has access to the river a quarter mile upstream. It'd be a lot easier than what you just did. It opens doors. It's the right thing to do. And uh, I swear it builds fit, good karma with the river with fish. Like, I, I catch more and bigger fish when I pick up trash. Maybe that's just my superstition, but there's a good reason to do it. Especially at these creative access points it's smart to pick up trash and i filled a bag it is full 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 all right let's look at what we got here um notice what's missing it's okay i got this paddle i'm not going very far but i just didn't need the extra weight of the motor and the battery um got my camera mount set up got two rods there one facing forward, another camera mount here for this camera. My PFD, my dry bag, and just enough tackle. Just enough. There's a lot in there actually. Just enough. Got my bump board, got my beverage, got a hot beverage, and got snacks for all day long. And I've tucked my duffel bag right in there. So I think we are, uh, <clears throat> we're good to launch. Let's go catch some fish. You may or may not have noticed that I, when I did all of that, I did it without my dry suit on. Because when you're that physical in getting your gear in and even setting it up, you're, you're gonna sweat. And when you sweat up the inside of a dry suit, it's moisture on the outside of your skin. And what that means is that eventually you're going to get colder than you would have had you let your your skin, especially in the upper half, respire and, and just give off moisture. Yeah, you got to keep yourself hydrated after you do that, but if you let that moisture build up on the inside of the dry suit, you're you're going to get cold pretty quick. Let's start out with uh, this finesse jig. It's a little bit heavier than I usually use. Not because of the flow, but because I really want to target wood. And sometimes when the, when the line goes over a branch, it deadens your, your sense of the bite. And uh, I definitely want to feel it. All right, no takers on the jig so far. I think I'm going to try a little bit of spy bait action.
GoPro start recording. GoPro start recording. Five bait, largey, I think. Get you in here. Look at that. First fish of the day. I think I might take you downstream a little bit in case you have friends in that pocket. He didn't take it very deep. 13 inch to start. to the bottom or close to it and then we start So it's low and clear, and these fish are not on the bank where I started. They're out in the middle. It's just kind of what happens. You know, the river comes up, they jump on the bank on that wood. I'm not saying they're not on that wood. I'm going to work the wood with, uh, with a jig. A little bit later, especially if I get the sun to come out and <clears throat> really do something. But better fish. How big are you? 16 incher. See ya. So they will pick up debris when you let them go to the bottom, but I haven't had them snag real bad unless they throw it like right on brush and I think the the deeper spot out in the middle here I don't know but I don't see brush out there Ooh. there are fish out there though try the jig out here as well Things too. Okay. So I don't think it was a matter of the right bait as much as the right location. So I got a lot of this pool to to work today. See how many of these concentrations of fish I can find in the deeper spots. Banks a little bit deeper. Throw it up in that uh, root ball there, see if anyone's home. Feel each branch that it kind of pulls over, let it free fall, get to the bottom, and just sit there a minute. This water's cold, and uh, they need a moment to decide to eat it. They know it's there, it's super clear. These fish know everything that's going on around them. 
They just don't move on everything real fast. Okay, <laughs> I knew there'd be an adult or two on that bank. Look at that. Switch to the black jig. I don't know, I'd throw the green one up there. You didn't take it real deep, but you took it. Sometimes switching colors. Black is my favorite for stained water or even full on muddy water, but uh, we are far from that today. It is super clear, but black will still work. All right, so that fish in that clear water did pull me into the spot where I think there's some others. There's it's just a steep bank with a I can see a big big log. He pulled me in. So I'm letting it rest. I, I released him away from the spot. I'm gonna take a minute and eat. You gotta keep up with your calories when it's cold. Your calories feeds your furnace. Yeah, you got friends. One of my <clears throat> subscribers scolded me once for, hey, finish chewing before you talk, all right? Sorry, is that rude? I just have thoughts, <clears throat> so I'm gonna let him go when I let him go. The black jig always works, and I think part of it is that it's crazy visible from a long distance, it really stands out more than anything else. It's the absence of light. And it's like a neon sign. So they see it from a long way away. And I've also seen really, really soft shells um, in season when it's warmer that are basically black. They're really a dark, dark, dark green, like a, is that one? Like a dark watermelon, but it's basically black. And just, you know, gooey as chewed gum. It just, you know, it's super soft. Have not hardened up. And I think, you know, when they see a meal like that, that says, ooh, it's an easy one, they gotta take it. Super visible, super soft. They don't pass it up. So, the first place I caught fish, I, I drifted over it. I actually got pulled in by one of them and I looked down and I'm like, oh, there are dozens of them. There's a lot of fish in one, one spot. And um, <clears throat> I catch four, five, and then it, then it, shut down and I know I moved the fish away to try and minimize that but sometimes you just gotta leave it let it settle down and I've caught some fish elsewhere um, and maybe I'll let this settle down and go back down there um, I'm gonna put one or two more casts in there but I think I need to do frequent visits to clusters of fish because you're going to catch a couple and then you're then it's going to stop because you're going to sore lip some fish and they're going to go down there and look freaked out and the rest of them will be freaked out and forget about eating. Yeah, no, I'm going to go back down now um, because I think by now it's been an hour. They've forgotten about forgetting about eating. So they're probably ready to eat again. Let's go set up on them. Got to be stealthy. Got to slink down one side and make long casts to uh, to where I know there's a lot. <laughs> There'll be a lot there too. 
don't know. So, I feel like the right move is to stay as far back as possible. I can cast that jig pretty far. I think I can hit that. And let the anchor down. Slowly. It's got a nice clutch on it. The anchor wizard. And I'm, I'm not letting it slam on the bottom. Even though I'm way over here. Uh, part of this. And I'm letting out extra line. So that it, it really digs. But part of this is so... Helps that I'm still, right? The anchor does, but there's not enough current that it really matters. Um, but what this really does is it keeps me from being pulled over there. And I'm gonna sit here and see how long it takes. I don't think it's gonna take more than 10 more seconds. Less. So, yeah, it's a good spot. GoPro start recording. It's not the only spot out here. But I think the other part of this is to, is to be quick about it. Like, catch a bunch of them, boom, 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 boom. You know, as quick as you can, one after the other. They're in there. I'm watching the line, put my finger on the line here, and I'm really, I got slack, really just focused on that point that I can see where the line enters the water, because it'll hop sometimes, even if you don't feel it, you don't feel the tap, that visual strike detection of that where that line enters the water. That can tell you so much, way before you feel it. Scent helps so much. You don't need a lot, but frequent touches with this stuff, just a little bit here, a little bit there. It makes it so, and look at that, that fine wire hook is bent out a little bit. But it makes it so these fish, even if you don't feel them bite it, they start moving with it. And then you feel that. That's that just there feeling. Well, GoPro start recording. <clears throat> Sometimes they don't move real far. But they just hover. And they're only going to do that if it tastes right to them. Not a largies. Good, good fish. All right, get it back in there fast. Let's see what he is. He is fourteen and three quarters. Sorry, I shouldn't have belly flopped you. Didn't mean to. That was rude. I'm a rude, rude fisherman. I don't mean to be that. I've been here another 15 minutes after catching those two and nothing. It proves my point. I, I think I got a bite a second ago, but it definitely proves my point that when you put fish you've caught back in with a bunch of fish that they've been with <clears throat> they're done biting for a minute I'm gonna give this another that one tapped it 
<laughs> as I say, I'm about to give up. One pops it, so that was on giving him a different look. Scent to jerk shad with that rigging bullets, finesse rigging bullets. Did put scent underneath it, but with that weight, I just, it's, uh, it casts pretty good, but on bottom, I just don't feel it with that hard connection on bottom. I think I only feel it when they really just definitely do something with it. I'll give it another five. If I haven't caught one in another five, I gotta move back up and work some other areas. But to catch two in rapid succession and then nothing for 15 minutes, that tells you something. They're already shut down that quick. So frequent visits. Let it settle down. Come back. Catch two. Go somewhere else. Come back. Catch three more. Alright. Give them one more different look with the go back to the spy bait. This segment sponsored by Boondocks. We support fun. You having fun? I'm having fun. <laughs> You'd probably be having more fun if you were here with me. Um, we're going to take a look at what ended up being, you know, a layout that I'm really happy with, especially for the throw and go kind of, you know, application here. I got everything I need in, it's in this sort of horseshoe, you know, of, of access that is around my foot well. And the part that ties it all together, um, I mean, the existing track is, is good, but without the uh, the groovy console with the risers up at the top, it's just, it, there's unutilized space up there. And, you know, we need, we need stuff that is within reach. And I can reach a lot of stuff. I can reach my anchor with the anchor wizard. I can reach my beverage here. Can reach these little crescent kayaks pockets here on the side, which I actually have plug knockers in. Um, I can reach the camera mount. <clears throat> I can reach my net and the roto grip. I can reach all my tackle in front of me. I can't tell you how cool it is to have tackle in front of you. And I got some snacks in there. And um, got my torpedo throttle, although I'm not using it. I use I'm using a uh, I got on the uh, the Yak Attack tether, pliers, clippers, braid scissors, a little bit of everything going on there on the one. And, um, and yeah, I can reach behind me for some stuff. Mostly my rods. Stuff I don't access as frequently is back there. Um, and I can reach, you know, my catch board. It's right here. And it's clipped to the groovy console so it's it's a setup I've been really happy with for sure and it's a good rod stager keeps those tips out of out of trouble All right. is it time to give up on this for another hour got to be one more worth it you know that wants to eat Come on, give me one more bite. No, they're all freaked out. Alright, let's move on. Get one more before I left. On the jig. to the spot where I caught two up here earlier. Yeah, there's a big old log right there. It was probably a pile of them, but now I'm sitting on top of them. Pick up this guy. Oh, huge log in deep water. Oh, 
to try to not move. Let's see how many I can see. But yeah, this guy pulled me right into it. Several. Several big logs. I don't see fish, but I probably spooked him out. Letting him go. Letting him go right on top of his buddies to tell him. Tell the story. Let me just sit here. Cast one downstream more. See if I get something going. Yeah, so I have thoroughly crashed that. <clears throat> catching that one fish. Let's go find some fresh spots. I've let that pool settle by just exploring further and further north, further upstream, and uh, seeing some good water. I think it's good water, it's just maybe not good winter water. Some deep holes, but they're short lived in their depth. Whereas where I was, that whole thing was deep for the majority of it. All right, I'm going to zoom in. I want you to notice how green that water is. Really, the vegetation there. It's winter. There's a whole lot of green right there. Look at that gushing out. So, I think if there's any depth there, there ought to be some fish. Oh, I just missed one. Right in there. So two things happened at the same time. Two different fish. I spooked one out of the shallow there and I had one on that honestly my rod tip was so hot the hook set I had nowhere nowhere else to uh, to swing. And it's because I was kind of one hand paddling on the way up and one ready. But they're here. There are fish right here with this big spring. It's probably just a creek that has a lot of spring influence. The bottom's really craggy and snaggy. A lot of karst geology. Rough, rough rocks, a lot of pits. All right. I may come back to this. I'm going to fish this another three or four minutes and then I'm going to keep exploring around the bend. But there were fish right here. I just noticed this. You see that? That was on my hook point of the jig. The one that I missed was probably a carp or some kind of rough fish, but that is, that's a scale. It wasn't a bite, but it was a fish. So I've explored up as far as I think I want to and about had it with that dog. Now he's just doing his job, but come on dog, would you not just Cut it out. It's been half an hour. It's a good looking pool. Got good depth. But just, just those two fish right at the beginning. Made my way up to the top. Good woody structure and depth on both banks. Just 
haven't uh, haven't connected yet, so it might be time to head back down and uh, catch some fish where I know that there are fish. All right, time to head back down. Um, I should have caught fish in here. I did not. I did get another bite. I, I think it was another bite. I set the hook in the, and maybe it was just another, you know, hit a carp in the side with the hook. I set the hook, felt pulling, and then it was off. <clears throat> um, I'll be honest, the first hole, I know it. I've, I've fished it probably three, I think three times in the last four years, all in winter. I found it first, like, I don't know, almost 20 years ago. Just haven't been back to it since about four years ago. Maybe three years ago. Anyways, I have picked that apart and I know the eat spots. I don't know the eat spots up there. And I kind of had second thoughts about including it because I know that Come on, get off of there. I know that my audience retention tanks when, when I'm not catching fish. It just drops off. But then I think, you know, who do I make this, this channel for? I, I think it's for the people that watch to the end. My three percenters, you're still watching uh, because you watch it and then you go put it to use. Um, people that want the highlight, the highlight reel get the highlight reel at the beginning maybe they watch 10 minutes they pick up a couple things but I'm like you know what I, I think you just want to want this to be for the people that watch to the end and if uh, if people you know drop off and don't get whatever's about to happen for the you know last part of this this episode Oh well, it's on them. <clears throat> I think it's important though to show that I just put two and a half hours into that pool and got nothing. That that's the reality of winter fishing. You know, you you go into an area and you say, I want to figure out the eat spots. Well I can't tell you that I did. And one thing I thought of what I found, oh, got that one good. What I found, these rocks are like really pitted and grabby. Uh, what I found this, this pool down here, um, it was high and it's not like it is now. It's low and they're out in the middle. They're, they're I don't wanna say they're spread out, but they're in places that are not just pressed up on the bank in that eddy and there's a bunch of them there. Um, most of the winter holes, winter pools that I find that I'm successful at, that I know, yeah, this is it. There's a, there's a concentration of fish here, or at least a handful of them and they're good. That almost always happens when the, the river's up some, and it is not up. It's, it's low. It's not crazy low, but this is, this is not when you pull into a spot and you're like, oh yeah, there's there's a bunch. And then you know, yes, this is a winter pool. That might have been, maybe I just didn't hit the right side of the right log that had six or seven really good ones on it. It looked right. The whole thing looked right. The whole thing looked like it had places where they would uh, they would hang out and high, you know the high water refuge box was checked off. Um, that huge spring or creek, spring creek, um, that doesn't make a winter hole, but it's kind of a cool feature. Um, lots of lots of deep areas with just super slow current or no current. Um, so I'm moving my way back down. I've kind of looked and fished through here quickly um, but this doesn't look right that did and uh, right now I'm just on the off chance that I scoot through an area and I spook some fish I at least want to see them 
grabby rock. I have arrived at eat spot number two. No love at eat spot number two. Gotta be some stuff in between here and number one. So at higher water, there's a bunch of them, but I'm gonna work the bank on the way down. I always like to initiate a backwards momentum so I can maintain line tension on the jig as I drag it backwards. <clears throat> Otherwise, if you're moving towards it, you have slack in the line. So I'm moving the jig with the kayak. Super clear water. I am putting <clears throat> the anchor down agonizingly slow. So as to not bang. I think if I can land this one, it'll be a double digit day. Yep, fish number 10. In here. Mm. <clears throat> a lot of them in there this size. That one hit the, the four inch scented jerk shad. And must have poked them pretty good. I need the pliers. Mm. Gather. Alright, send them back in. Send this back in as quick as I can before he races back to tell everyone that I'm here. Be a bit stronger than the last. Don't really know yet. I'll loosen the drag just to make sure. GoPro start recording. Eh. Oh, he's got a big boy with him. That was a four pound fish underneath this, I don't know, pound and a half fish. Huh. They're liking the scented jerk shad. See ya. Keep it going. Keep it going. Okay, stop recording. This is three in a row. But they're getting smaller. Up and in. Whatever ear class this 13 and 14 inches was a good one. A lot of them in there. So, mm, this bait, mm, the four inch scented jerk shad, with or without the salad, mm, is uh, I'm, I'm basically fishing it like anyone would fish a Ned rig. Is that still sharp? Yes. This goes down, tail goes up, sits there and goes like this. Fish moves up on it, it kind of goes like that. <clears throat> I've watched them do it, but it's, I mean, it is a more elegant 
Ned Rig. Seems like it may be a little bit better than the last couple. Yep, yeah, it's decent. <clears throat> yeah, maybe 15. <laughs> Where's your big sister? Where's that 19 incher I saw? Send her back. <laughs> Pick him up to 16. now caught more than any other bait. <clears throat> Black jig is still caught the biggest. It's just how it is. So I'm catching the 13s and 14s but both times I've drifted over it I've looked down there and seen 17s, 18s. The one that came back with one of the first ones I caught this time was 19 might have I don't think he was 20 but he was 19 he was big for sure solid four have caught fives out of here but high water higher they're in here I think it may be time to tie on the black jig, go back up to eat spot two. <clears throat> Let this settle down some, and um, I don't know. That'll probably be the end of the day, though. Turned out to be a pretty good one. Missed one in there on the on the jig just a second ago. One more out of eat spot two. So yeah, I definitely like this pool more <laughs> with more water. Bigs eat better. Um, I have, I know I'm over 20 fish on the day. Um, I know that I have had days out here in January where I've caught over 50 fish and like good ones in the mix. Um, but I found this spot a long time ago floating this river when it was up and when a river's up it just it's a little bit more obvious where you should spend your time because there's a lot of places you shouldn't um, in this bank in particular was one that just had had current protection and uh, we pulled in on my buddy Rich's cataract you know we were floating you know 
raft on a two-man cataract and pulled up on this bank and just, you know, got four or five right at the end of the day. Um, not a stellar day. Uh, it was really cold. There was a lot of ice. But it was like, it was obvious, like, yes, this is, there, there's something going on here. And when you cover a lot of miles, when it is up, you know, you, you, I don't say you luck into, but you figure out some spots that are like, yep, we're going to have to go back there and just spend a whole day there. And, uh, you know, it took me 17 years to come back and spend a day on it, but it's, uh, it's a good one to come to. Um, I kind of feel like I should have gone up to the Susquehanna because it is up. Um, but I wanted to change it up. I don't know why. I just felt like, yep, yeah, I want to get on a smaller river, get some largey, just to change the pace. And I did want to teach what this boat to me is about that throw and go. Put it in the hull, you know, put rods and, and paddle in the hull, pack light, drag in, be quick about it. And uh, I'm getting ready to do that in reverse. So, got a little bit of daylight left. Kind of don't mind leaving when it's, it's dusk. Uh, less people are likely to ask you questions when it's, you know, when it's dusk. So... I got a few more fish to catch. At least a few more casts to make. All right, last cast.